Let's keep it going for our host, Eric Potts. Keep it going. Eric was talking about how his son used to trace hand turkeys for Thanksgiving. I remember doing that in school, except I got in trouble. So the teacher was like, Jim, uh, a hand turkey, there's a head, and there's supposed to be four feathers, one for each finger. Yours has five. I was like, yes, uh, that last one's my penis. <laughs> the issue was I was a senior in high school, so <laughs> it's a little less acceptable. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I just went out and got a haircut just for you guys. You like it? Yeah! Uh, my hair was getting long. I'd slick it back, and everyone kept coming up to me, and they're like, Jim, you look like a white supremacist. So I was like, oh, I can't have that. So I went and got this haircut. Now people keep coming up to me, and they're like, Jim, you look like a white supremacist <laughs> who's infiltrated local politics. And I'm not wrong. November 2nd, don't forget to vote. Jim Kelly. That's right. County comptroller. <laughs> Look at some of you guys trying to pretend you know what a comptroller is. It's adorable. Guys, uh, I'm gonna try something a little different tonight. I'm gonna try something a little wacky. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I, need, I need a participant. I need to show a hand. Someone who just, you don't gotta do anything crazy. Answer a couple questions if that's okay with someone. Uh, I think Steve's probably a good candidate. Uh, you done fucked up, Steve. Steve, are you, are you okay with me asking you a few questions? Go ahead. That's technically consent. Everyone heard it. This is already better than most dates I've been on. It's not that they say, like, no, no. It's usually, who are you and why are you in my house? It's 3 a.m. All right, Steve. Uh, Steve, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give you the choice between two topics. Okay. You're going to get a pick, and then I'm going to do a joke about those topics. Simple enough? I got it. This way, if one of them bombs, technically it's your fault. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone already hates you here, so... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Steve. You seem like a guy. <laughs> All right, Steve, you ready? Yeah. Simple enough? All right, first set of topics. We got big boobs or racism. Oh, sorry. Uh, wrong page. Uh, I started seeing a psychiatrist recently, and she recommended... Uh, it might be helpful for our sessions if I wrote down a list of my passions. <laughs> Here we go, Steve. Are you ready? Feminism or the environment? Shit, wrong page again. Sorry, Steve. She also thought it'd be helpful if I wrote down a thing, a list of things I hate. So. <laughs> All right, here we are, for real. First two topics. Psychology fun fact, or my new girlfriend? What are we going with, Steve? Choose wisely, because like I said, everyone already hates you. Can I talk on my cable real quick? All right, you can discuss it, I don't care. Just hurry up, dude. Girlfriend, girlfriend for 500. Girlfriend, okay. Don't treat me like that dead host of Jeopardy. I'm better than him, I'm alive. I would take his pay, though. Um, all right, my new girlfriend. Uh, Steve, I, I do have a new girlfriend. I just started dating this girl. Uh, that's great. Uh, you like sex, Steve? Love it. Mm, I would have doubted that, but i take your word for it. All right, Steve, you love sex. I love it, too. My girlfriend, uh, I don't like to brag, but uh, she can fit an entire fist in her mouth. Whoa. If I punch hard enough. <laughs> Guys, believe it or not, technically that's not a joke about hitting a woman because 17 is still considered a girl. <laughs> Guys, I'm kidding. My girlfriend's not actually 17. That's ridiculous. But she will be in November, so close enough. <laughs> All right, Steve, you're doing great. You ready for your next set of topics? I think so. Okay. We got new home or that time I banged my teacher. You needed to deliberate? Are you kidding me, dude? I should arrest you. You're trying to become a cop? Okay, that time I banged my teacher. In school, most kids, most guys, it's their dream, their fantasy to have sex with their teacher. For me, it was a reality. That's right. I did bang my teacher. They played hard to get though. Wanted to wait till I was 18 years old, make sure that it wasn't illegal. 
as if something being legal makes it moral, especially considering uh, I was homeschooled. <laughs> but in, in, his, in his defense, my dad was, he was a great teacher. My dad was a great teacher. He taught me, taught me all I know about physics. I remember this one lesson he taught, he taught me when an immovable object means an meets an unstoppable force, that that's called docking. <laughs> Guys, I'm just kidding. Obviously, me and my dad did not wait until I was 18. What's the fun in that? What's the fun in that? All right, Steve. Here we go, last round. And now I'm done picking on you until I decide to pick on you again. Are you ready? Yeah. We got bestiality, or we got fun with bestiality. <laughs> Steve, I'm gonna tell you right now, choose wisely. <laughs> what? Fun, fun with bestiality. You just walked directly into my trap, Steve. <laughs> you done fucked up again. <laughs> fun with bestiality. Because now, Steve, now since you chose that option, like an idiot, I now, I want to learn a little bit about you, actually. I'm going I'm to ask you, I'm going to ask you a question, something very, you know, impersonal, nothing major, no one's going to, you're not going to get embarrassed or anything. You're right? Is that fine? No. Oh, well. Like I said, the whole consent thing's a pretty big issue for me. All right, Steve. Um... No, we'll start off so. We'll start off so. Steve, where are you from? Hamilton. Hamilton? That's a town. All right, Steve. So we're going to build up gradually. We're going to build up gradually. Nothing crazy. See, that's fine, right? All right, Steve. Um, if you could have sex with any animal, what would it be? Oh, God. You're not getting out of this. I'll stand here all night. I'll, fucking run night. I'll ruin everyone's goddamn time. I don't care. Come on, Steve. Any animal. Let me rephrase it. If you had to have sex with any animal, that's why you're thinking so hard, right? It was forced upon you. Come on, Steve. A whale? A whale? Dude, that doesn't even make sense. You could fit inside of its blowhole, let alone your pecker. Are you kidding me? Were you thinking like a baby whale? Because that's illegal. You should get arrested again. You got handcuffs on you? Eric's a retired cop. You got handcuffs? I want this guy. I'm collaring him. I think that's what they call it. I don't know. I watched a lot of SUV. Growing up. SUV? SVU. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> the one with the, the you know, mid-sized compact. Not a sedan, but a little bit, a little bit bigger. All right, Steve. Uh, a whale. I don't know where to go with that. I asked that question on stage for the first time. If you could have sex with any animal, what would it be? And this guy yells out, Puerto Rican woman. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's why I can't invite you to shows anymore, Dad. <laughs> he's sitting right next to my mother. She's mortified. And it doesn't make any sense to me, because typically when a guy wants to like cheat on his spouse or whatever, they want the polar opposite of what they have. Uh, and my mom's 100% Italian from Brooklyn, New York, which in my opinion is basically Puerto Rican. So, <laughs> that's close enough. Oh, I love her. <laughs> See me, like like I said, you'd want the polar opposite. Like my girlfriend, she's uh, she's brunette, she's tall, and I hate to admit it, she's intelligent. <laughs> so me, I would want nothing more than to get with a retarded blonde midget. I, it is what you want to do. The polar opposite. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Get head standing up, swing her around, throw her up in the air like a pizza pie. Sorry, that's the Italian on my mom's side coming out. <laughs> All right, Steve, I'm not going to pick, pick on you anymore. So fuck Steve, right, guys? <laughs> yeah. 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 Steve's a good guy. Steve's a good guy. Fuck Steve. Steve's good. Dude, it's weirder when you say it to yourself. <laughs> That's like I masturbate in front of the mirror kind of thing. That's an issue, dude. You want me to talk to my psychiatrist? Right there? Dude, you don't have any worse problems than I have, trust me. So, uh, so, uh, smooth transition. I was accidentally gay last week. I'll explain. 
Uh, me and my best friend Fred, we were down at the bar, hanging out, having a good time, shooting pool. And in walks the hottest girl I've seen all summer. And what does she decide to do? Miraculously, it's hang out with us two idiots. So we're having a good time, we're drinking, getting drunk, laughing, we're dancing, we're flirting with her, she's flirting with us. She goes off to the bathroom, and Fred and I, we start arguing over who we think she wants to get with more. She must have overheard us too, because she comes out of the bathroom, and she's like, boys, boys, stop fighting. I'm into both of you. How about this? I will blow both of you in that bathroom right now, if, because there's always a catch, <laughs> you guys make out for 30 seconds. No shot. I looked at Fred. He looked at me with disgust in our faces. We're like, absolutely not. Like, no chance. Not happening. That's gay. We are two straight heterosexual men. No way. Never gonna. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> she was pretty hot. Uh, so I looked at Fred. He looked at me, and we shook hands and started tongue kissing like men. <laughs> and then get this. She didn't end up blowing either one of us. Fucked up, right? Like we held up to our end of the bargain. We made out for 30 seconds. And then 45 minutes later during last call, we opened our eyes and unlocked our lips. This girl was nowhere to be found. How gay is that? And I thought women were supposed to be known for their patience. I, uh, I, did, I did happen to get lucky though last week. Hold your applause. Uh, that's right, I was out at the bar getting drunk as I do. And uh, I went home with this sexy Middle Eastern girl. Uh, believe it or not, she was actually born in Afghanistan. Topical, I know. <laughs> Anyways, we go back to my house. We're hanging out. Things start heating up. We move it to the bedroom. And one thing I know is when you, uh, when you approach sex with someone from a completely different uh, background or country, you have to do it very delicately as to not offend any of their cultural sensitivities or differences. But I didn't do that. No, instead, I panicked, waterboarded her, and sent the intel directly to the Pentagon because I'm a patriot. <laughs> yeah. Pentagon just got back to me. Turns out she was Italian the whole time. Honestly, mistake. <laughs> just like my mom. I can say that joke because I would pay the CIA to waterboard my mom sometimes. <laughs> I'll leave you guys with this. I, uh, I, did, uh, I did actually meet someone from Afghanistan for the first time in my life. Very unique experience. I was at the airport. I was coming back from Tampa, uh, which is in Florida, in case you're stupid. And uh, <laughs> my flight got delayed from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. So like any normal person, I went to the bar and got rip shit on tequila. Yeah. So I was sitting there, a kid about my age with dark skin walks up, he sits down beneath, uh, besides me. His name's Abdul, he was born in Afghanistan, now studying medicine at UPenn. Me and him kick it off immediately. We're busting each other's balls, having a good time, laughing, having fun. We finally, it's time to board our plane. I was sad, I was like, I just met a friend. I never thought I'd want to delay getting on the plane. We get in line, we get to our seats, and wouldn't you know it, Abdul's in the seat right next to me. He even offers me the window seat. That's my favorite seat on the plane, guys. <laughs> so we're stoked. We want to celebrate. Flight attendant comes around, she gives us her first round of beers. Cheers, we chug them. A few moments go by. Thought it'd be funny. I nudge Abdul in the elbow. I look at him in the eyes and I say, Alo Akbar. <laughs> and suddenly, we start dying laughing. It was hilarious, it was great. A real knee slapper. We catch our breath, a few moments go by. Flight attendant comes back around, we get our second round of drinks, cheers, slam them. Abdul thought it'd be funny, looks at me in the eyes, nudges me on the elbow and goes, Alua Akbar. And suddenly, no longer hilarious when he did it. He had to know what it was, kind of terrifying. Seems a little bit xenophobic, I blame the media, it's not my fault. Flight attendant came back around, she's like, sir, can I get you another beverage? I was like, no, I'm quenched, but do you mind, uh, you mind checking the cockpit to make sure that the pilot's not thirsty and also alive, if that's cool? All right, guys, uh, Halloween is here. We like Halloween. Woo! So for Halloween, anyone here have kids? Yep. Kids love Halloween. No one loves Halloween more than kids, except pedophiles. I'll explain. Current day, it's gotta be tough out there for a pedophile. Right, sir? <laughs> Think about it. You got decades of increased awareness, technological surveillance, Chris Hansen, it's no longer an all-you-can-eat buffet like the 70s. No, these pedophiles have to work for each and every meal. But not on Halloween. You see, Halloween is the one night, the one night of the year where if you're a pedophile, opportunity, literally, is <laughs> knocking on your door. All right, guys, I'm Jim Kelly. Let's give it up for our first time.